Hey, Eric Worrell here. Stephen White. And we are of Rent Prep. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to do a proper move-in inspection. We're gonna actually toss it over to Andrew Schultz, who is a property manager. And I'll warn you, this video is pretty long, but it's because Andrew is extremely detailed with how he does a move-in inspection. And it's really important that you do these well for yourself as a landlord, because as Steve knows, what is the number one thing that is argued in landlord-tenant court? Security deposits. And yes, it may be a longer video, but I've gone through it. Well worth it. Take the time. Uh, learn from an expert. Andrew knows what he's doing, and it clearly comes through on this video. So take it away, Andrew. Hi, everyone. This is Andrew Schultz, Associate Broker with Realty Edge. We're standing today in one of the most recent acquisitions for one of our clients. This is a property that our client purchased as an investment, um, and we're going to be taking this property on as part of their property management. So today we're looking to shoot a video. Uh, in addition to shooting the video, we're going to be taking photos showing you exactly what it is that we take photos of when we go to do a move-in inspection. The property that we're in today has been completely untouched since we closed on it. It's in good shape, but not great shape. So you're going to get to see some of the things that we'll point out as damages that we would note uh, on a tenant's move-in condition form when they go to move into a property so that they don't get charged for it on the way out. Um, you're going to see me taking a lot of photos. I use a cell phone. I just use my Samsung Galaxy Note. Uh, the most important thing to remember when you're using a cell phone is to have the apps on there that will time and date stamp the photos for you. Most phones don't natively support time and date stamping photos anymore. So you're going to want to put an app on there that will take care of that process for you. So one thing that I always make sure of when I'm shooting photos is to have a frame of reference. So the frame on my phone, as I'm aimed right now, I can see essentially from the top corner of the post here to basically where the countertop starts. So basically I can see from here to here and I'm catching part of the microwave and part of the window. So what you're trying to do is make sure that you cover as much square footage as you possibly can when you're taking your photos so that you have the best photo set that you possibly can. So what I'll do is I'll take my first photo and then I'm looking in my photo frame for a reference point as to where I want to shoot next. So the very bottom of the photo that I shot, I can see this outlet clearly. I want that outlet to be in my next photo so that I have a clear frame of reference. When I go to look at these photos later, I can see, okay, well here's the upper cabinets and then here's the lower cabinets. So I'm just going to move around the room taking photos and then I'm going to start taking photos of the cabinets and I'll call out important details as I'm shooting. Just setting it down a little bit. And again, always paying attention to your frame so that you know where you're shooting. And this one, because it's a weird angle, I'm actually gonna wind up taking three shots. And then I'll shoot towards the door frame. And again, I'm taking three shots there. So that gives you a good around the room shot. So you've got a good set of photos all the way around the room. The next thing I'm going to do is shoot the ceiling and the floor. Then I'm going to walk to the other side of the room and shoot the ceiling and the floor going the other direction to kind of cover your bases in terms of did the tenant splatter grease all over the floor or uh, you know something along those lines. There's a ceiling fan in this kitchen as well, which is great because it gives us the ability to capture that ceiling fan and the condition it's in. This one happens to have a blown bulb. Uh, that's something that you would want to note if your tenants are responsible for taking their own, taking care of their own light bulbs. So you just have to be mindful of what it is that you're shooting when you shoot. And don't feel like you have to get every photo in exact sequence. Um, there are times that I will be shooting an apartment and I'll think, did I get the ceilings and floors in that room? As soon as I think that, I'll go back and shoot those photos, because if you think I'll just wait until the end, you're going to forget. Just go shoot the photos and then come back to what you were shooting. So we now have ceilings and floors of this entire room. Uh, now what we're going to do is shoot the cabinetry, and then we're going to shoot the appliances. So when I'm looking at cabinets, I usually work top to bottom, left to right, all the way around the room. That's how I do all of my photo sets. What I'm looking for is to get a good shot of the face of the cabinets. And then I go through again after I'm done with this, and I will shoot insides of all the cabinets. 
So now that I've got exteriors of all my cabinets, I'm gonna go back through, open cabinets up. What I'm looking to shoot is the doors as well as um, the shelves. Not necessarily, I guess you can shoot so that you have photos of the actual shelves themselves. I'm looking to show that the shelves are empty and that they're intact. So that if tenants leave a bunch of debris behind, you have a frame of reference that you can use uh, for charging them for removal of damage. So if you miss a photo and the tenant turns around and causes damage to that item, you could be out potentially hundreds of dollars. Even something as simple as a stove knob. We just had to replace one of these stove knobs and because it was non-standard part, it was a manufacturer only part, we ended up paying $27 for one stove knob and that was after surfing online and looking for the best price and things like that. So you really want to make sure that you're getting as much detail as you can into your photo set. So I take inside and outside photos of every drawer and every cabinet to show before and after condition. You would be surprised at how many times you'll turn an apartment over and you'll come back and it'll have broken, uh, broken drawer bottoms and things like that. Things that just aren't the way that they were when you turn the possession of the unit over to the tenant. Product manuals. If you have product manuals that you're turning over to the tenant, it's a good idea to take a photo of those manuals as well. Number one, so you make sure they come back to you. And number two, so that you can prove the tenant had manuals showing how something is supposed to be operated, how it's supposed to be cleaned, etc., etc. I don't remember if I shot that drawer, so I'm going to pull those back out and reshoot it. So in an average two-bedroom apartment, I shoot usually 250 to 300 photos. Most of those photos are shot in the kitchen and in the bath. So this is the most time intensive portion of the photo shoot is the kitchens and the baths, but it's also the place where you want to have as much detail as you possibly can. This is where all your big ticket items are. So this apartment also has a garbage disposal. We'll make sure that we test that. So that's all of our cabinet shots. Now we have all of our cabinet shots. The next thing I'm going to shoot is the countertops and the sinks. So what you're looking for on the countertops is making sure that you have a good photo showing the entire surface area, showing that it's clean, showing that it's free of marks, things along that line. This countertop's in good shape, no damages on this. We'll shoot another one here. We're going to shoot our sink, and I usually get a couple shots of the sink. I will get one showing the entire sink with the faucet. I'll get another one showing shooting down into the sink, checking for any damages. Then what I'll do is make sure that our drains are flowing by turning the faucet on. And what I will do, oops, it's got a plug in it. And what I'll do is I'll just let the water run for a few seconds to make sure that it's actually flowing the way it's supposed to. And I always give it a thumbs up to show, yes, this is flowing freely. We'll do the same thing on that side. Then actually, since we're here, we'll check the garbage disposal. And what I'll do for that is I'll get a picture of the switch in the on position. And we'll go ahead and shut that down. And all of these countertops are in pretty good shape. Uh, it's important to know that because a lot of times tenants will think countertops are cutting boards and you wind up with countertops that are all busted up when you get them back. Once you get into appliances, we get very detailed. The reason we do that is because appliances are expensive, and if your tenant breaks things, the parts are expensive. I just mentioned the stove knob that was $26 or $27. You're talking, if you do like a crisper tray, uh, like a vegetable crisper tray in a, in a refrigerator, those are sometimes $40 a piece, sometimes even more. It just depends on the quality of the appliance that you're putting in place. The other reason that we always shoot appliances is because we actually had a tenant. We did a very nice flip in South Buffalo. We put in brand new stainless steel stove, refrigerator, and dishwasher. Uh, when we got the apartment back, there was a busted up beige refrigerator, there was no stove, and the dishwasher had giant dents in it. 
I was new to the industry, I didn't have the photos of it, and as a result, I wound up buying a brand new set of appliances. So now we're very detailed on our appliance photos as a result of that. So we'll start with our microwave. What I do is I get a picture of the front. I'll get a picture of the underbelly because this is one of the venting microwaves being over top of the stove. I'll get a picture of the instrument panel. And then we do have, you can see where there's some dirt up here. Obviously this hasn't been cleaned, so I'll actually get a photo and I'll put my finger in for reference as to what I'm shooting at, showing that there's some dirt there that's not clean. Inside the microwave, photo of the door. Photo showing the interior of the microwave. And then the last thing we always make sure we get is a clear photo showing the model and serial number. It's actually funny, the model and serial number are worn off on this microwave, but we'll take a photo of it anyway. The reason we shoot the model and serial number is number one, if I have to order parts for this appliance, I already know what model appliance I'm looking to get parts for. I can go right online and start searching. The other reason we do it is if the tenant swaps out the appliance, you can go back and say, not only do I have photos of the appliance when you moved in, I know exactly what make and model and serial number was in there. So the tenant no longer has the option of saying, oh no, that was the appliance that was here. Microwave is done. We'll move on to the stove. And if you want, you can pull the stove out, get photos of the side of the stove and things like that. I typically don't. It is something that can be done, but you know, you got to draw the line somewhere. Get a photo of the instrument panel, get a photo of the top. This is a glass top stove. There's a little bit of a wear mark here on this burner. So then going back to our frame of reference, I'll back up a little bit so I can see the entire top. I'm going to come in, take a second photo of the burner, and then I'm going to take an up close photo showing exactly what the damage is that I'm referring to. This is actually a uh, this is actually a method that police officers use when shooting a crime scene as well, believe it or not. It gives you your wide angle, it gives you a zoomed in shot, and then it also gives you your detailed shot. One of the things I always carry with me when I'm doing an inspection is a quarter. I'll set the quarter down so I have a reference as to how big, everybody knows how big a quarter is. You can carry a ruler or whatever you want, um, but if I set a quarter down and take a photo, I now have a reference of how big the gouge is or how big the, the, the mark is, what have you. I'm actually gonna take that quarter back out. There's a small ding on the stove here, so I'm going to point at that ding with my quarter for reference, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take another shot of the ding with a quarter in the frame. So we've got the entire stove top. We're gonna to shoot detailed shots of the instrument panel. Usually if this is dirty in here, I'll try to get a photo of that. This one in particular is pretty filthy, so I'll grab a quick photo of that. You've got the door, you've got a little bit of uh, dirt and grime in here, you've got some, some wear to the glass. So I will get a photo of that showing what the condition is at move-in. Now I'm shooting basically just the, the cabinet of the stove itself. I'm checking to make sure there's two racks. I'm looking at the condition of the racks, looking to make sure everything is in there that's supposed to be. Looks good. Now we're gonna take an exterior photo of the drawer. So our stove is all done. We've done top to bottom on that. Our microwave is good. We already shot the garbage disposal. Now we're gonna move on to our dishwasher. All right, so front of the dishwasher looks pretty good. I don't see any damages. Come in here, we'll get a picture of the control panel. We'll open it up. Again, we've got some dirt there, so I'll take a quick photo of that. Door down. I always make sure to get a picture of the entire door. I'm going to shoot special shots of the detergent station. And I'm also going to make sure we get photos of the silverware drawer. So there's four doors on that silverware thing. We're going to go ahead and shoot that. I'll close it off. Shoot it again, just so we can see that those are intact. Pull off the bottom drawer, get a photo of that. Then when I have the bottom drawer out, I will come in here and shoot a picture of the cabinet itself. 
can pull the top drawer out. We'll get a photo of that. And there we go, dishwasher is done. One of the things that you're looking for when you're shooting these dishwashers, I'm actually gonna grab my flashlight here. You've got a drain assembly in here and also a filter assembly. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that filter assembly is clean of any food debris and things like that. Um, that's one of the most common, common tenant complaints is if the dishwasher's not draining properly or it's not cleaning properly, generally it's because they have food that's stuck in that filter. The easiest way to clean it, take it out, spray it off with your sink. Leaves us with one appliance left. Come over here and do the refrigerator. So there are a couple of dents here on the side. So what I'm gonna do is take a photo of the exposed part of the refrigerator. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna to point to the dents. And actually there's kind of a line of dents here, so I'm gonna take the fingers, just kind of show what I'm shooting. We'll get a photo of the top of the refrigerator, showing whether or not it's clean or dirty. This one is filthy. shoot both of the crisper drawers, showing that those are intact, that they're here, that they're not cracked or anything like that. Now, in this particular refrigerator, we do have a little bit of damage right here. There's a, a crack on the top of the shelf here. So what I'm gonna do is, we'll do that, th that same three-phase photo. Sometimes these are tougher to get a photo of with them being basically a very tiny crack on a white surface. So now I've got a scale for reference. I can see where the crack is. So in this shot that I'm taking from this angle, I can't see the crack in this shot, but I can see the quarters, so I know where my crack is. And then when I was in here further, I made sure to get a picture showing the, the crack itself. So now we have our coverage on that. Since I'm down here, we'll go ahead and get a picture of the model and serial number plate. Get a picture of the settings panel. Now we're able to do our door. While you're here checking, might as well check your seal to make sure your seal is tight on both doors. See, we got a little bit of a gap here. We'll shoot showing that that gap is there. So one of the last things I do before I exit a room is take a quick look around, top to bottom, left to right, and see if there's anything that I thought I forgot to shoot. In this instance, I didn't shoot either one of our windows and I didn't shoot our mini blinds. So what I'll do is I'll come back. Windows are hard, hard to shoot because your phone is automatically going to change brightness to, uh, to try to capture the sunlight on the outside. So you gotta play with your brightness settings a little bit. Realistically speaking, if you don't have a crack or a break in your window, there's not really a lot you're shooting on the window itself, just that it's intact and not broken. The one thing you do want to shoot is your screens. These are also kind of tough to get a good photo of, but you just do what you can. Uh, and what you're looking for is to make sure there's not any holes, that the screen is intact, things of that nature. We do have a mini blind. I shoot mini blinds twice. I shoot them once in the up position. I also shoot them again in the down position so that if there's any broken slats, or in this case there aren't any broken slats, mini blinds are constantly destroyed by tenants. If you're using the cheap belly ones from Home Depot, they range anywhere from five to $15. However, they do add up quickly when you have to buy 15 or 20 of them for an entire apartment. Okay, I'm satisfied with my photo set in this room. We're gonna move over to the bedroom next and then we're gonna shoot the bathroom.